everybody. Welcome to Soapbox. This is Joy Halstead. And um, I have some very special guests tonight, and I so appreciate them coming here. Um, we kind of had to pull this together at the last minute, but I think we came out quite well on this, and it's going to be a lot of uh, information that people should be aware of. It's, it's a very important uh, thing that's happening right now in our country. And um, I am very happy to be having my guests on the show. Before uh, we get into that, um, I just want to mention our sponsors and thank them. Uh, Pieces Pizza by The Slice, including low-fat, vegan, gluten-free options, as well as a fine uh, selection of beer, wine, and soft drinks. We thank them for supplying pizza for the crew. They're located on 21st Street near Capitol Avenue in Sacramento. Also, we'd like to thank the Humor Times. It bills itself as the funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription in print or digital format. More info along with uh, cartoons, funny fake news, videos, and more can be found at humortimes.com. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we're on Facebook. Please check us out at facebook.com slash Soapbox Sack, and give us some feedback and make some suggestions. We'd really appreciate it. Um, and we, make sure to check out our past shows uh, on you, the YouTube channel. It's uh, Soapbox Sacramento in the search box, and it should come up. And we'd love to hear some comments on the shows as well. And last but not least, we'd like to thank our volunteers behind the scenes who make each show possible. Um, we wouldn't be here without them, so thank you to them. Shout out to them. So now I'd like to get into um, our discussion, and what we're going to be talking about is the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, DAPL, D-A-P-L. Um, and I have some people that um, have... A lot of knowledge, have some personal experiences, and I'm very happy to have him here. I'm going to let Chris introduce himself. Um, I'm Chris Brown, and I'm with the Sacramento Climate Coalition, a group of groups that oppose uh, the Dakota Access Pipeline. We stand with Standing Rock, the Sioux, uh, who have been standing in front of it in a prayer and ceremonial camp along the Missouri River trying to stop this pipeline, which is really not just a threat to them, but a threat to all of us. I agree. And we have Greg, but he's going to give us his oh, real I'm name a, and title. I'm uh, Wehenapa Iron, Crow Creek, Lower Bro, uh, Lakota. Uh, I go by Greg for most people who uh, have a hard time pronouncing my name. Um, I'm here to help represent my people and bring uh, some uh, awareness to the situation that's going on there and a little bit of the history of why the water is important to our people. I'm very happy to have you both here. Um, so, Greg, you were saying that you have um, been at the sites, and um, how long were you there for, and what, what, what did you do while you were there? Well, while we were there, uh, we were there for about a week. We came all the way from uh, California, uh, Sacramento, Davis area, and uh, we traveled over, and uh, on the way there, we kind of, uh, we could see uh, the, uh, the fossil fuel uh, the detriment it's having across the country and all throughout the, uh, the Plains area, all the way from Arizona, all the way through to uh, North Dakota. And uh, it's, uh, it's pretty, uh, it's impacting the environments there a lot. And it's, uh, it's, it's uh, something that needs to be addressed. As far as uh, when we were there, we were there for a week and uh, we were at the campsite. There weren't uh, too many actions going on there, but we were being monitored by the, uh, the police helicopters and uh, they were really trying to keep us back. This was after the, the first few uh, actions had happened over there. And so they ended up arresting uh, Olawan and we had an action there to help, um, help get her freed from the county. And uh, we got pretty intense there. And uh, yeah, the police, police were pretty aggressive, and everything ended up turning up out okay. But yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a whole different world out there uh, when you're dealing with the police. They uh, they're not like the police out here for Aren't sure. Are they very militarized out there? Yeah, they are. They have a lot of gear out there, and it's uh, it's they have uh, it's overkill. It's definitely overkill for people who are protesting peacefully. And uh, 
that, that should be addressed by the uh, by the federal government. To what are they actually doing with that uh, with these type of uh, weapons, especially with people who aren't armed, people who aren't violent, and for people who are doing a peaceful protest, and uh, it's really not being addressed by the uh, the North Dakota government or the federal government, which is. Uh, it's a shame because they're clearly violating uh, the Lakota people's rights and everybody's rights who's there because it's, uh, it's not just the Lakota people there because it's not just the Lakota people being affected. All right. Do you have any um, plans on going back? Uh, we hope to be going back pretty soon, but um, we're still waiting to see. So um, I'd encourage people to keep, keep, uh, keep up with what's going on down there and uh, if you can't be active with going there and help out with donations or uh, be aware of what's happening in our local areas with our, uh, our local water situation yeah. because it seems all across the country our, uh, our water and our natural resources are being attacked. Right. And it's not just uh, Native people's water, it's everybody's water. Even here with them uh, Nestle pumping out right. water or um, them wanting to uh, the drain the delta or the tunnels, things like that are... Uh, are issues that need to be addressed by the local communities or even uh, the uh, chemical content of the waters. Uh, our waters are being polluted with chemicals from uh, fracking and it's, uh, it's across California and across the country and uh, people should be made aware of it and really think about it, not for yourself, but for the kids, you know, yeah. and for the people who and are it's coming. it's like we have to be our own media because you don't hear about this on, you know, regular mainstream media news or anything really you're just getting a small taste of it if you get anything yeah well that, yeah that's why it's important if people are available tomorrow the 15th of november there's mm -hmm. actions across the country uh in support of standing rock and we're going to have one here in uh sacramento at noon and then there's going to be one in davis at two at the army corps of engineers offices now and the, that's on j street it's and on J Street, right across from the uh, convention center. And that's at noon, right? At noon. Yeah. And, you know, when you have, we have more than 400 people signed up. We really need to fill those sidewalks with people protesting because that's what get the, gets the media to cover right. it is when they see lots and lots of people. And uh, so it's an opportunity. They'll also be paying attention because these kind of actions are going to be happening across the country. The Army Corps of Engineers has to give that oil company uh, transfer energy partners a permit or they can't drill under the river. So this is critical to st get the Army Corps of Engineers to back off that permit. Yeah, and um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how this happened to, to um, them get possess this land when I thought it was native land. Oh, did you want to address Chris? Um, well, basically it's an issue of the kinds of permits they get uh, to go across using eminent domain. Okay. And um, it was originally supposed to go north of this uh, around Bismarck, but of course that's a white predominant uh, community and they protested and they didn't go and consult the Sioux until they were already building across their land and that's when the Sioux got involved and actually had to, to sue and now Interestingly enough, even though the Army Corps of Engineers has allowed this process to go this far, they can stop it. And the other agencies in the Department of Interior have actually encouraged the Army Corps of Engineers to reverse what they've done so far, that they went too fast in helping the oil company. But of course, that's what the Corps of Engineers history has been, right. uh, you know, putting dams on the Missouri and the Mississippi and helping uh, industry. So. It's, it's no surprise that that's what they did. Yeah, it yeah. just, you know, now it's just, we're, we're, we're seeing it, yeah. you know, in real life. And, and it's, you know, a lot of us that, you know, I mean, KXL was like an example. A lot of people got to, came together for that. But this is even, this is way bigger than that, you know. And that's what I think is wonderful is we have to, we have to really figure out what's important. And they're putting profits over people, and you know we can't drink oil, right? right. <laughs> yeah, um, it is also on treaty land, on uh, Fort Laramie treaty land, and uh, in in those treaties, one of the things that is stated in there is, uh, if the natives are being treated wrong, then there's a process that needs to be followed, so that they could follow up with the federal government. So the tribes kind of have to unite and start to really read through those treaties and try to be able to follow up 
with the, uh, with the process. There's also the opportunity to occupy the land to try to transfer ownership, but um, some, of the, uh, some of the organizations that were around during the time of the treaty have changed names. I can't remember the, uh, the name of the organization that actually would uh, keep uh, the title of the land, but they become the Bureau of Land Management. Mm. So um, we really need our lawyers to follow up with uh, the status of those treaties because those treaties have been upheld in like in 1980 with the, uh, the Black Hills decision. Um, they are valid treaties. Otherwise we wouldn't have won that case. And uh, what they're doing is wrong on a, on a federal level and on an international level uh, on from the government to government basis. Yeah because uh, those are valid treaties and it's been proven in federal court. I'll say that again. And uh, uh, the, the Army Corps of Engineers really need to look into that and the Department of T the Interior in particular because they're the ones who are supposed to be regulating and reporting directly to the president on what's happening with the Native Americans. Yeah, and the president hasn't done a whole lot, has he? I mean, that's what's really sad. Is no, he hasn't. I don't know what he's waiting for. I don't know if he's waiting to go through the proper process, if he's waiting to go through the, uh, the Secretary of Interior, who's actually on his, uh, his cabinet. And uh, because below her is the, uh, the director of the BIA, which is her secretary. So there's a, a direct connection there, and I'm sure they're aware of what's going on, but no action is actually being committed. So um, that's, that's what concerns me is how are they going to watch this happen? Yeah. And uh, they're also watching things, like I said, like this happen across the country. Yeah. And so. Yeah, we're, we're at a very risky time now. We know that the countries came together uh, last year in Paris and agreed that we needed to hold global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade. And in fact, you know, we're headed higher than that right. and we know that how dangerous that's going to be for humankind and other species across the and planet. we're already seeing it now. I mean, exactly. We're seeing the first. The fifth extinction. The sixth. Six. But yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, you're right. They, yeah. yeah. A lot of species are, are becoming extinct thousands and the uh, the reality is is that it's going to cost some people some money. These oil companies have invested lots of money and they want to develop those uh, oil fields and they're not going to be able to if we hope to preserve life on the planet. And that oil has to stay in the ground. And I think that the president and the administration has reacted in fear because of all of the financial interests. But there's going to be some disruption. And it's going to either be climate disruption or economic disruption. And I think for the hopes of all of us, the Lakota are taking a leadership position here that we need to stand with and say it's humanity uh, and the natural world is more important than economy. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I'm just so glad that there's, there's so many people out there. I know so many people that are doing something to support the cause. You know, they're sending clothes, they're donating money, they're putting their bodies on the line and going there to help out. And um, I'm very inspired by that, and I hope other people will be too. Because um, with Obama going out and not having done much, now we have to look at Donald Trump, who doesn't believe in climate change yeah. and o only cares about, you know, the almighty dollar. Um, that's really frightening to me. Yeah, it's going to be risk. And the whole world, I think, is watching at, here in, in sadness and despair over some of the things he said during his campaign. And we can expect that uh, the Trump administration is going to be really uh, hard on the environment. And those of us who care are going to have to stand up. We're going to have to get in the way of the kinds of policies that he's going to be supporting. Yeah, because I, I, we don't want to lose some of the progress that we've made, you know, that we can't go back. Right. There's just no way. Um, so hopefully people will, uh, you know, unite. Mm -hmm. and fight back and say no, no more. Um, and, you know, I don't, I, I don't know if you guys are aware of the Trans-Pacific Partnership and how this would have played into this, this as well. It could have, I mean, hopefully it's dead and over with. That's what they're saying. But that was another fear, you know, of, of them having power and, and killing our environment and being sued if we didn't allow them to do it. So... Hopefully that's off the table now, but 
Um, as far as, you know, like our water and, I mean, do we have any idea of how bad the pollution has gotten over the, like the last 10 years? Uh, sure, they measure the pollution. I think in terms of the, the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, we've already seen what can happen um, in uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, about five oh, yeah. years ago. There was, or maybe it was almost 10 years ago now, but the, uh, rupture. Rupture. the rupture of the pipeline yeah. cost more than a billion dollars, and they still didn't get it all clean. I mean, there's still contaminants there from the oil spill in that river. And then recently, the Bakken crew, the same uh, reserve that they'd be pumping oil out of in, through this pipeline if they get it built. Hopefully they will not, but if they did, that has spilled into the Yellowstone River. Talk about a very sensitive yeah. ecosystem. Yeah, so. and that's just, you know, it's so scary because we need to respect our earth, you know, and... Um, yeah, it, it kind of seems like we're almost like running out of time when it comes to uh, defending our resources and uh, more people need to, to seek out organizations like yours or, or like the Win in Wintoon and people who are actively trying to uh, stand up for the environment or even as far as going to their uh, local governmental bodies and lobbying. You know, even our, uh, our local tribes should be getting more active as well. Um, we have tribes that are in positions of power but they haven't taken as, as active a, a step forward that can be taken. But uh, altogether, we need to be uh, walking forward to try to save our water and our, our forests and all of our natural resources, what's left. Because other than that, like all of those places that are left untouched are the same places where the mineral resources they want are. Right. And that's how come it seems like they're going after them is because that's the one place they haven't tapped. If we leave it up to them, they're going to finish off our oceans. They're going to finish off our forests. They're going to oh, cut great, the tops of our mountains. Kill us all. And, yeah, um, but I'd, I'd suggest to the, uh, to the people watching to reach out to their local organizations. Don't feel helpless. Uh, be aware and uh, participate, definitely. You know, show up to actions or even show up to a meeting. Um, see who's out there and see how you could help. It, it doesn't take much. Just uh, attend a meeting, you know, spread a word, hand out a flyer, send out some emails. Every, every little bit helps. And join in, like, some of the rallies and the protests, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, get the numbers out there. Um, and I, I hope that this is a movement now that's going to continue on until, I mean, it's always going to be an issue, but if we can, like, slow it down, yeah. get control, try to, you know, not have any more of our land damaged and raped, right. um, I mean, that would be a small step in the right direction. Yeah, I think, ironically, that uh, Trump's election may have helped in the sense that it appears to have woken up a lot of people. This is not the first action that I've organized here in Sacramento. And, you know, usually we get somewhere between 80 and 150 people. Um, and we already have more than 400 people signed up for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know that they're all going to show up, but if they do, they're going to fill the blocks of J down there along yeah. the sidewalks. I mean, that's going to be a lot of people uh, and it'll be very impressive. And I mean, a lot of the protests that you see now, they're all including um, the DAPL in their protest as well. Right. Um, so it's, it's part of everything that we're fighting against, you know, and it's a big part. I mean. Yeah, I think a lot of us are dismayed at watching the way they're treating uh, the tribes down there and the people who are, are protecting the water, that they're tear gassing and macing them and shooting them with rubber bullets. Rubber bullets. It's just... It's not humane. And, and the dogs that... Yeah, the dogs being released uh, to bite people, that's crazy. And the, the police are allowing a lot of these things to happen, you know, and, they're, and the things that are allowed to happen, they're not being followed up by, by the local police. Are some of these private security people as well? Uh, from, what I could, from what I've seen, some of them are. You know, there's like they're illegally detaining people, which is technically kidnapping. Right. So uh, as far as security goes, they're not supposed to be detaining people, but more or less letting uh, the police know what's happening. And it's, it's just crazy what the, the security is being allowed to do, uh, what the security is being allowed to do. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's not right. It's a violation of civil rights all the way around. And it's like it's not just the security. You have some of the local people I saw the other day on the Internet. 
there was a, a man, he pulled a firearm on some people. And, I saw that yeah. too. Yeah, and the one and, lady got run over. Yeah, and the lady got ran Her over. Feet, yeah. And none of these cases are being followed up with, you know, and it's like, it, on a on a on a law level, like at least the BIA police should be following up with it because they're federal police and they're charged with protecting the people. But I haven't heard of any situations with that happening either. Yeah. Well, I'm he I'm hearing too that a lot of the law enforcement agencies that are there they're running out of money to continue. I mean, I'm sure they'll get more. Somebody will give them more, but yeah. I mean, the taxpayers should know that's where some of their money is going. Yeah. Well, that, that's what helped uh, end nuclear testing. I was involved in that movement back in the 80s and early 90s. And eventually, we just basically bankrupted the police. And so they essentially would put handcuffs on people to get them out of the road and then let, let them go, go at the end of the day because yeah. they had no way to prosecute anybody. Right. They didn't even put them in jail. There was just so like... It wasn't even sight and release. <laughs> it yeah, was just, just like, release. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because we overwhelmed their ability. And I think that's what will happen here with time because these rural counties don't have the money for that. No. And um, it's crazy the amount of armament. It's It harkens back to the time in the 19th and early 20th century when industrialists were allowed to just do whatever they could to to their workers, to people who uh, didn't have anything. We're seeing that again. This is tragic. Well, we're losing our human rights is what's yeah. happening. Yeah. And it, all through Wyoming, I saw uh, like uh, political posters calling for deregulations. They were saying regulations are not American. Right. And so these companies are actively campaigning to have more access to do more destruction. And it's like, and it's like they're, they're what it is, is these energy companies prey on poor communities that need the jobs, and so they let anything happen. When I was in uh, Mandan, in Mandan, over by the Walmart, they have a giant oil refinery that's right there along the Missouri River. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's hidden behind a hill and you can't even see it. And it's like right behind Target. And people know it's there because the locals work there. But at the same time, all throughout that area, there's like, chemical stains on the pavement, there's chemical mm -hmm. stains on the street, and like, people are so oblivious to it because to them it's always been there. And not being not coming from there, it's like, I, that was one of the first things I noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like, I saw the actual size and, and the, the scope of the oil refinery they have there that's already there, and it, it's amazing, you know? It's like, it's like I could see all throughout the country that these energy companies are preying on the people who need work the most. They are, yeah, absolutely. And they say they're helping, but it's like it's at the cost of their community's and health it's short and their term. water supply. It's short term, and they, they, they're, wor they're working them like slaves, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. And it's not worth it in, in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I, w I don't know how you could look yourself in the mirror, you know, doing that dirty work. I mean, it's, yeah. it's bad. Well, we have a few more minutes, and you guys wouldn't want to add anything before we're, we're over. Uh, well, I think it's really important that people stay focused on this and make sure that we keep the pressure on until this pipeline is done. One of the things to remember, a lot of times people think we can't win against these big, powerful companies uh, because they have so much money. But in fact, delaying does lead to wins. Mm -hmm. um, if they get to the point where they've invested too much money and too much time in it, they'll just move on to another project. I had. Uh, 10 years working in um, Texas. So while I wasn't in the oil industry, I knew people that were. And they, the tax laws that we have in this country, they just write off all those costs. They don't pay taxes on them. They recoup the money that way and they just move on. But you know, this is the end of the fossil fuel era. We're gonna see a lot of right. these struggles as these companies try to stay alive. And we've already seen bankruptcies in the coal industry. Yeah. We'll see bankruptcies in the other fossil and fuels. And there's a well. lot of divesting going on as well. Yeah. So that, you know, hit them where it hurts in their pocket, you know, yep. in their bank accounts. Yeah. Because that seems to be the only thing that matters to them. Um, only thing I'd like to say is, uh, like, for the people to really get active, follow up with the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, talk to your local uh, Congress members, um, call the Department of Interior, question them. Uh, call the head of the Bureau in Indian Affairs, ask why they're not helping. And um, as far as your local actions, please get uh, um, get active locally. Come to the actions tomorrow in Davis, Sacramento, and uh, find out what's happening with our own water supplies in California. You know, um, 
I'd like to send a big shout out to the Winnemont Wind Tune. You know, they've been uh, pretty active in bringing awareness to what's happening with our water in California. And uh, yeah, just just be aware, be active, and uh, every person helps. You know, and and always remember that you count. And uh, this is for our family, this is for our kids. And, and water is life. Yeah, water is life, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Min, mini yeah. Choni, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for so having nice us. It's so nice to yeah. meet you. Uh -huh. I hope that we'll be uh, seeing you at a Actions. And this is not a fight that uh, is going to go away. I mm -hmm. think it's going to be the long term. So we all got to get strong. Yeah. And hang in there and... Looks like we have some guests, maybe. Let's see. Yeah. Come here. Come on. Got a so minute. She, come here. Come over here. Come she, we have a shy little girl here, but she's really cute. So <laughs> this is the reason why we do it. We do it for our kids. That's right. Hey, son. Hi. Hop up. Hop up. Hop up. Okay. Everybody say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yep, we got to do it for our kids, guys, our planet. Yeah. To many witch honey. <laughs> All right, thank you, guys. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, this is, you know, this is what it's all about here is life. And if we stop them from taking our planet over with their greed, we can all live better and healthier. Yeah. I think that we, we succeed. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll do our best to try to make it fun. It's a crisis situation.